Hello and congratulations on being engaged. My name is Dakota Hersey and I am a wedding photographer in Wilmington, North Carolina. And today I'm gonna to give you my top seven tips for the first things that you should do as soon as you're engaged and you're starting to plan your wedding. So just to start off, I know you're probably freaking out. This is so exciting because you get to spend the rest of your life with your best friend and you also get to celebrate that with all of your favorite people. I know I'm about to give you a very tactical, task-driven list of things to do, but before you get into that, really just take the time to be excited and live in this moment. All right, so when we're talking about wedding planning, it can go from, oh my gosh, I can't wait to do this, to it's gonna cost how much, to I literally have no idea what I need to do next real fast. And that's okay because you're not a professional party planner. You're supposed to lean on the professionals. It's literally our job. As a photographer, I start talking to my couples really, really early in the planning process, which I love because then that allows me to help in a ton of different ways. So today I've made a list of things that you should start thinking about and start doing as soon as you are engaged and planning your wedding to get the ball rolling in the right direction. Number one will be to decide on your priorities. This is the most important and necessary thing that you will do in all of your wedding planning, and this is the hill that I will die on. You'll have a budget that you want to spend, things that you absolutely do not want to compromise on at all, and then also a few things that you don't really care about, or at least your day won't be affected if things don't go exactly as you planned it. So it's really important to understand what your top three to five priorities are so that that way when it comes time to compromise, because unfortunately you probably are going to have to compromise somewhere that you'll be able to make that decision confidently. Everyone has different priorities. Some people really care about their photos and some people really want to get married in a beautiful venue. Some people love flowers and they want flowers everywhere. It's truly up to you and should only be decided by you too. This should also be a team discussion because you and your fiance probably have different priorities too and that's totally okay as long as you guys are on the same page. Number two is to prioritize all other aspects of your day. Now that you have your top three to five things that you care most about, you can start prioritizing all of the other things about your day. So now I know you're thinking, what are even the things that I should be prioritizing? What's even on this list of things? What goes into a wedding? Here's just a quick list of things that are a part of a typical wedding day, ranging from venue to photographer, to dress, to rehearsal dinner, invitations, table settings, linens, staff, caterer, DJ, flowers, coordinator, literally the list goes on. So if you are looking for a really long one, you can pause this video, go to the blog post for more. And like I said, you may want all of these things. You may want only a sum of them, but this is a pretty good start. It's really best to have an idea of everything that you envision for your big day so that that way some of those smaller things that are not necessarily on the forefront of your mind don't get forgotten, like the rehearsal dinner or getting gifts for your bridal party. Number three, determine what your realistic budget is. Now that you have the list of things that make up your dream wedding day and you have them all prioritized, you can start to really define what your budget's going to look like. Start with the higher priority items and then determine what you're willing to invest in them. For me, I have a very specific list of people and places that I want to work with when I do get married. I also have a pretty good idea of how much they all cost, and so I'll be working my budget around those things that I care about most. But if you aren't drawn to a specific place or person or service, then you can set your budget and then start to find people that fit within that budget. Okay, so just a quick note as you're figuring this all out, there really isn't a thing as a reasonable budget. Reasonable is relative. What may be low to you may be high to somebody else or vice versa. There really isn't any shame in having a budget that fits your situation and your priorities for you. But what you will need to think about is making sure that your expectation does match your budget. The goal is to find the sweet spot of finding those vendors that you love and are going to give you the experience that you're really excited about, but also fit in with what you're willing to spend. Even if you have to make adjustments, that's where your priorities come into play. But at the end of the day, people invest in the things that they value. Number four, get an idea of what you want your day to look like. All right, so now we're onto the fun part, actually designing your day. You'll need to start thinking about what you want your day to look like 
everything from the style of the wedding to your guest list size. Do you want something timeless or trendy? Do you want something that is huge with all of your friends or something that is a little bit more intimate? As you're designing the style of your wedding, you do want all of the things to flow. So it's best to start at the top of your priorities and then work your way down so that those things that you care about most are determining what everything else will look like. For example, if you've always dreamed of having an elegant ball gown, choosing a rustic barn location for your venue is probably not gonna make the most sense. That being said, you will probably need to make some adjustments to your budget, seeing how you have overestimated or underestimated based on your preferences. I personally have always gone back to Pinterest when I'm trying to get inspired. It can be really easy to fall in love with so many different things and then realize that there isn't really a cohesive design going on. So having the board with all of the original things that you fell in love with will be really helpful so you can see everything at a glance. And then if this is just really not your strong suit, I highly recommend recommend hiring a wedding planner. You will want, aka need, a wedding planner on the day of to make sure that someone is handling all of the details and things are getting to the places that they need to be so that that way you don't have to worry about it. I do recommend a month of coordinator at minimum so that that way they can come in prior to the wedding day and take on all of that communication that you've been doing with your vendors so that way they know everything that's happening. But you can bring them on from the very beginning if you want help with planning the full day and getting their recommendations on different vendors um, and really piece together that full vision that you have in your head. Number five, decide on a date and a venue. One of the first and biggest decisions that you will have to make is deciding on a date. You may have a very specific date in mind or know that you want to get married in a specific season. There are pros to cons in every season and I will link my previous YouTube video where I go through every single season and all of the things that you can expect. But ultimately the date like everything else, is completely up to you. You will want to do some research once you have narrowed down your dates just to make sure that you're not running in with any other big events happening in your area. And also knowing that holiday weekends will likely result in additional fees from your vendors because they have to be able to find staff to work. You'll also want to think about the style of your wedding that you're going for, the typical weather outside, if it's gonna be hot or cold, if there's gonna be big storms rolling in, or kind of things like that when you are picking your date. If you're okay with being a little non-traditional, you can also look for non-Saturday day dates for your wedding and that will help you save a little bit of money or either take that money and invest it in another part of your day. I know in Wilmington, Friday and Sunday weddings are starting to be a bigger thing and even Thursday weddings for the venues that people really, really wanna get married at. Once you have a date in mind, you can start reaching out to the different venues that you would be interested in. If you are interested in a really popular venue or you want to get married during a popular season, it is best to reach out as soon as possible and then also be ready to be flexible if you are really in love with their space. In North Carolina, the most popular their wedding dates are in May and October, and a lot of those dates book up to a year and a year and a half in advance. If you have another vendor that you absolutely must have at your wedding, then reach out to them before to make sure that they're available on the date before you choose a date and a venue. Number six, start reaching out to other vendors. Now you can start reaching out to other vendors and start crossing things off of your list. Again, start with your higher priorities so that that way you can piece together everything that you're looking for and what fits in your budget. I personally believe it's really important to connect with your vendors and work with them because you are in love with their work or really impressed with their service. I know when you start seeing all of these dollar signs, it's going to be really easy to get caught up in that, but it's really about the experience that they offer. Wedding vendors are people too, and we're here to really serve and love on our couples, and we pour so much of ourselves into what we do. When you're reaching out to different vendors, do your research and ask questions about how their process works. Don't be afraid to get on the phone with them or meet with them in person to talk through what your vision actually is. And if you're having a hard time coming up with questions, be honest about that too. I have my brides all the time tell me that they aren't really sure what questions to ask and so we normally start with talking about their day and then I walk through my entire process and that usually either brings up questions that they didn't know they had or things that they hadn't even thought about. Number seven, remember it's your day. You're going to hear this from so many different corners. Don't listen to anybody else. It's your day. Don't worry about them. Depending on your personality type, this can be a lot easier said than done. 
but it is true and it is necessary. Plan for and invest in the things that you and your fiance really truly care about and value and your day will be exactly what you dreamed of. If you need someone to bounce ideas off of, I would love to help. I love hearing about my couple's visions for their day and seeing if there are areas that I can help with or if I know people that can help with those things because I spend almost every single weekend at a wedding. Okay guys, congratulations again. Good luck with all of your planning. And if you like this video, I would so appreciate if you would like it and subscribe to see all of the other wedding planning tips and things that I have for you as a wedding photographer. Okay, bye guys.